Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. In this video, we're going to be simplifying an expression with 11th power. I'll be presenting three methods. Let's get started. So the first method is going to be the following. I'm going to separate these into one plus i to the power 11 divided by one minus i to the power 11. Don't worry, I'm not gonna use the binomial theorem. I'm going to use an identity we just recently talked about 1 plus i and 1 minus i are special complex numbers because when you raise them to the second power, you get an imaginary number. Remember that? So let's go ahead and square this expression and then, of course, I need to get to the 11th power, so I'm going to raise it to the fifth and then multiply by an extra 1 plus i. Same thing at the bottom. And now we have... 1 plus i squared and 1 minus i squared. Remember what they were? If you square 1 plus i, you're going to get 2i. So that's 2i to the fifth. And this is 2i, negative 2i to the fifth with a negative sign. And then we have 1 plus i over 1 minus i. If you expand this, you're going to get 32i to the fifth divided by negative 32i to the fifth. That is multiplied by 1 plus i over 1 minus i. Notice that these two cancel out, leaving us a negative sign or a negative 1. And then if you go ahead and simplify this 1 plus i over 1 minus i, I need to multiply by the conjugate. So that's going to be 1 plus i and 1 plus i. Of course, don't forget the minus sign. And when you multiply two conjugates, remember, the product is always a real number and it's the sum of two squares. Remember that? So if you multiply a plus bi and a minus bi, the result is a squared plus b squared. You probably remember this from lecture notes. This is also the absolute value of z squared. All right? So this is going to be a 2, and this is going to be squared again. You know 1 plus i squared, don't you? That is 2i. 2i is divided by 2, but there's a minus sign. The 2 cancels out, and the answer is negative i. Don't get me wrong, it's not negative i squared, so it's not 1, it's just the opposite of y. Whatever i is, right? Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. All right, so for the second method, we're going to use a different route, and you're going to decide which one is easier, which one is better. You know, everybody has different preferences. So here's what I'm going to do. Obviously, the first method was kind of like brute forcey, even though I didn't use the binomial theorem. In the second method, we don't want to kind of write this as a quotient of two powers. Let's just simplify the inside, right? So why don't we just multiply 1 plus i and 1 minus i by 1 plus i, the conjugate of the denominator. So it's going to look like this. Multiply by 1 plus i and 1 plus i, and then raise it to the 11th power. But first, do the multiplication. Great. Now, you'll remember this, right? This gave us 2, and this gives us 2i. Make sense? Because 1 plus i squared. So I keep saying it. Why is this 2i, right? You might be wondering. Okay, 1 squared plus 2i plus i squared. But i squared is negative 1, so these two cancel out, leaving us with 2i. Similarly, 1 minus i squared is negative 2i. All right, so this is going to give us 2i divided by 2, and we need to raise it to the 11th power. So it's kind of similar to the first method, but we don't have a minus sign, and we have the 11th power. Make sense? So what I need to do is raise i to the 11th power. As you'll probably remember, we've done some problems on sums of powers, and i to the 4th power is one that's something that you should always, always remember. And if you ever forget, remember i squared equals negative 1 at least, okay? Because you can just square both sides and you'll get that. i to the 11, let's see. 11 is 3 mod 4. What does that mean? It leaves a remainder of 3 when divided by 4. So I can kind of write this as i to the 4th squared times i cubed. i to the 4th is 1, so this is always 1. Forget about it. i cubed is negative i. And that's the answer. If you forgot that i cubed is equal to negative 1, I mean negative i, don't worry about it because you can just write i cubed as i squared times i. And remember, i squared is negative 1, so this is going to give you negative i. If you forget that i squared equals negative 1, I don't know what to say. 
Just remember that fact. If you forget everything about complex numbers, one thing you should always remember should be I squared is negative one. Anyways, I, people don't want me to talk too much about I squared equals negative one, but I think it's very important. So the answer is negative I as before. That shouldn't be a surprise, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. And obviously there is a fourth, which I'm not gonna get into, but there is one which is the binomial theorem. That's super duper brute force. I don't think you want to use it. So let's take a look at this expression, right? This expression is also special because one plus I and one minus I are also special. They are conjugates, but also, okay, this might be helpful in visualizing. So if you go ahead and plot these complex numbers, this is one plus I, right? One plus I is here because this is one and this is I. And then 1 minus i is going to be here, because minus i is here. So these numbers kind of some, have some kind of symmetry. But not only symmetry, they are 90 degrees apart. Look at that. This is for pi over 4. This is pi over 4, 45 degrees. Therefore, these two are perpendicular. So that kind of gives us an idea about the rotation. Remember, we talked about 90 degree or pi over 2 rotation. Anyways, I'll stop talking and get to work. Okay, I can just write... Replace, remember, i squared is negative 1 and negative i squared is positive 1. Can I just replace 1 with negative i squared? Of course, why not? And then treat the numerator as a polynomial. So I'll kind of write it as i minus i squared divided by i 1 minus i. And then factor out i and you get 1 minus i. And then 1 minus i cancels out. And this method does not use conjugates. It just uses polynomials okay and that gives us an i but this still needs to be raised to the 11th power which gives us i cubed which gives us negative i and that will be the answer and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye